Hi everyone, thanks for joining me today. I'm Gabby O'Neill, Associate Director of the Office of Personal Career Development at the University of Dallas. And today we're gonna to talk about resume best practices. This is part one of that presentation. So the topics we're gonna to cover in part one of this presentation are the purpose of the resume, or really a definition of the resume, um, differences between a resume versus a CV, some types of resumes, and common elements you would include in a resume. So what is a resume? Um, essentially, a resume is a summary of your education, your work history, your skills, really anything that's relevant to a particular industry, a job posting, or an internship posting that you're applying for. What it's really meant to do is showcase how you're qualified to um, perform a job or an internship, etc. So what's the difference between a CV and a resume? Um, I thought I'd touch on this just a little bit because even employers will use these terms interchangeably. But uh, when employers ask for a CV, at least in the US, they're typically asking for a resume. So a resume will emphasize your skills. Um, you'll use it when you're applying for a position in an industry, whether it's in the nonprofit or public sector. Typically, it's no longer than one page. Um, someone with a 10 years or fewer of experience, um, work experience and educational experience, should be able to list all of that information in one page or less. Um, if you have a little bit more than 10 years of experience, you can go on to a second page. And the resume also leads with work experiences, um, so that's the main focus. And you'd either place education um, at the top or near the end. Um, if you're a current student, whether that's in um, a bachelor's program or master's or doctorate program, you'd include the education section at the top. But as you acquire more work experience, you would list it near the bottom of your resume. So the CV is actually more academically focused and you would use the CV um, in academia if you're applying for a graduate program or if you're looking to work in higher education or as a teacher. Uh, the CV emphasizes academic achievements, um, whether you're applying for a fellowship or a grant or something like that. The length really depends on your experience, so the amount of experience you would have, whether it's teaching courses, doing research, things of that nature, um, you're definitely not limited to one page or even two pages. Um, and the CV always begins with an education section. So you may have heard um, this little factoid that the average recruiter spends about seven seconds looking at a resume. Um, the reason that I bring this stat up is to really just reinforce how important a resume is and how important it is that you organize the information on it in a strategic and eye-catching way. The reason that recruiters spend so little time looking at each resume is that they get sometimes hundreds, even thousands of applications for just one job posting. For instance, we had a Southwest Airlines recruiter come talk to our students last year, and she mentioned that for about the 30 internship postings they had for their summer internships, they received about 30,000 applications. Um, they're reviewing these by hand, so she was actually going through these one by one, not using an applicant tracking system or an AI you know, a computer to look through these resumes. She was actually flipping through them. And recruiters have a general idea of what they want. Um, they have a clear picture in their mind of what um, each job requires, um, the information that they're looking for. If it's not there and it's not immediately apparent, they just move on to the next resume. So it's very important that you um, format your resume and include all the relevant information that might be applicable to a particular job. My goal is to really just help guide you in writing a strong resume with important information front and center so that a recruiter will notice it. Generally a resume is very standard. There are things like 
education, work experience, sections like that that you would include on every single resume and there's a standard format, but you can be really flexible with your resume. So I'm going to go over some resume types um, that you can follow um, when writing your resume. The first is a reverse chronological resume. Um, it's exactly what it sounds like. Uh, you would just list your most recent work experiences listed first, um, followed by any previous experiences. The second is a functional resume, and this is a resume that really focuses on skills and everything else um, sort of revolves around the skills that you list. This is more appropriate for professionals who have a little bit more experience. Um, the third is a combination, so a combination of the reverse chronological and the functional resume. And this type organizes information with an emphasis on skills, but you would still list all of your work experiences and things like that in reverse chronological order. A lot of undergrads use this simply because they don't have a lot of direct work experience or skills, but combining the two in that format sort of makes your experience seem stronger. And then finally, there's a creative resume. You would use a creative resume if you're applying to a job in a creative field. So if you're in um, fine art, graphic design, marketing, maybe advertising, you would use a creative um, format. Um, this would allow you to showcase your design capabilities. Um, so you could create a creative resume using Adobe or Canva, um, any program that allows you to format a resume to make it look aesthetically pleasing. Um, I will caution though, if you can't do this well, don't do it at all. Um, if you submit a poorly designed creative resume, it's sort of like shooting yourself in the foot. So you can always submit a standard resume if you want to just be safe. So I just wanted to quickly show you a very standard resume. This is a sample undergraduate resume, but even a recent grad or someone a couple of years outside of undergraduate um, could have a resume that looks like this. And you'll see that, um, you know, there's an objective section, an education, skills, and experience section. It's one page. Each section is clearly delineated. It's simple. It's clean. Um, there's no white space. The font is very um, regular. It's just Calibri. And you may note that the format is just very simple and very straightforward. This resume was actually created purely just using Microsoft Word. Um, it isn't a template. And um, one note about templates is that um, I would just discourage you from using any templates or tables uh, from either Microsoft or Google. Although they can look very nice and aesthetically pleasing, um, they're just very, very common and recruiters recognize them instantly. And so um, they don't really speak to your um, ability to design and create an aesthetically pleasing resume. It's just a very recognizable um, format. And so you can just use Microsoft Word um, it doesn't need to be super fancy or creative. As long as the information is there and it's very clear and easy to follow, a recruiter will really appreciate that. So let me just briefly mention some common resume sections that you would include in your document. Um, some sections are pretty flexible and you don't have to include all of them. You can only include what pertains to you. Um, some common sections that you would include um, are education, uh, the contact information, um, your summary, a work experience section. You can include volunteer experience if you've volunteered before. Um, if you feel like you don't have enough work history or if you feel like it pertains to the particular position, you can add other sections like relevant coursework, class projects. You can also include uh, links to your online portfolio, anything that you think would speak to your ability to perform the job. You just want to be sure that anything that you include on your resume is applicable to the job. For instance, if you're applying for a marketing internship, but you don't have any real world marketing work experience, you can include a marketing class that you took 
You can include um, any marketing projects that you took on in class, um, including results or a link out to a website or anything that you may have worked on that you think would speak to your ability to perform well in a marketing internship. Really, there is no one size fits all resume. So your resume will change based on what jobs you're applying for. So that was a quick introduction into um, some resume best practices. If you want to go more in depth, you can click on part two of this presentation. If you have any questions about this presentation or the next, um, there's my contact information. I'm currently taking virtual appointments through Handshake, so you can click on that URL and uh, schedule an appointment with me or any of the other members of our staff. And you can also go to our website, udallas.edu slash opcd, where you can access more resume tips and samples. Thanks again for joining me for this presentation. Have a great day.